Diane, I'm listening to a podcast, Black Lodge Trivia Night. I've never heard so many game aspirations in my life. Can we just talk about how underrated Scream the movie is? The first one? Yeah, the first one. Yeah. Did you ever hear the story about how they made that? Uh, not made it, but how he wrote it? No, it, which is, it's actually an amazing script. Like, I know it's a joke, but Scream is an amazing script. I, I think he, I don't know how much he did beforehand, but when it came time to actually write it, I think he rented a hotel room and I thought I heard he wrote it in a weekend. Oh shit. He did the South Park approach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah now, I don't nice. know what fueled him through it. <laughs> yeah. But um, apparently he wrote it in a weekend. Um, so, yeah, that's not what? bad. Wes Craven, RIP. Um, is he dead? Yeah, Wes Craven's dead, right? Wait, who's the one that's... Um, okay, I think we're going to need to... Who's the other guy? Carpenter? He Maybe he's alive and everybody John thinks Carpenter. he's dead. Yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, maybe Wes Craven. Because I think he did the new... Didn't John Carpenter was involved in the new Halloweens. Yes, yeah, yes. Wes, Wes, Wes Craven died in 2015. Yes, that's right. You're absolutely right. Move um, on. Gone too soon. Mm. How old was he? Uh, probably 60-something. Yeah, not super no, old. No, 76. I was going to say oh, late 60s, okay. but 76. That's okay. average. Yeah, but yeah, a little, a little short. Anyways. Yeah. There's a little cold open for our listeners. We can either move it in the back or not. Uh, just scream. Yeah. Worth uh, checking out. Scream. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, welcome everyone to Black Lodge Trivia Night. For the first time in a little while, we have a full house. Wow. Uh, Matt and Patrick, how are you guys doing? Oh, um, nothing to complain about. <laughs> 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 I just spent the last 20 minutes so I can vent <laughs> into these guys. So I'm doing well. Thanks, Art. Nice. And Patrick. My double hysterectomy was great. Um, <laughs> And uh, I appreciate you guys asking. Um, it's been it's been a time. So nice. Yeah. I like that you went back for seconds. Well, yeah, you know, it's it's to get to, <laughs> to get the ones at the back of my throat and down, you know, oh, I'm sorry. Tonsillectomy. <laughs> <That's about> to, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> I did not have got- either of those procedures done. Just- <laughs> <laughs> we have to <laughs> it's good to have you back patrick it's been a while oh, yeah. um a couple a couple of things here first and foremost it is spooky season is anybody candling Just fucking know it dog nice <laughs> my wife made me throw out the one that i had oh Why? no what she didn't like the the last time that we were all together. I lit it, and she hated the smell of the oh, one that no. I had. Oh. And so she's she literally almost came in, but ass naked during a recording, <laughs> to make me blow it out and throw it out. Um, Got it. Oh, she was very not happy. So okay. I liked the smell, but she did not. So yeah, pour one out. Need to get another oh, sin from hell. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. It, um, we haven't done a ton of spooky season stuff this year, but we have done a little bit and we're going to do one more. And I think when this goes out, it'll be kind of wrapping up the month of October just after Halloween. So, but we do uh, have fantastic liminal horror. Yes, we did. And, um, I'm looking forward to, I don't know if wrapping it up. Is... Yeah, we have one more. One okay. More. All right. Um, so before we get on to what we're going to be doing tonight, which is going to be, the uh, rural horror English eerie Hell yeah. uh, yeah. that we played last year and had a great time with. Uh, we have a little bit of trivia. I've got a quick one. I, w- I want you to use yours, but I do have a quick one that's topical. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I brought up Wes Craven mm-hmm. to start the episode. Wes Craven directed a movie in 1991 called The People Under the Stairs. You guys familiar with it? I've heard of it. Okay. Two actors played brother and sister in it that were a love interest or I would a couple in Twin Peaks. Which two characters, or if you name the actors, bonus points, but which two Twin Peaks people were uh, brother and sister in The People Under the Stairs? Mm. Uh, what year was it? 1991. 
Okay, so it was right around Twin Peaks. Um, and they may or not be may or may not be husband and wife in the movie. And brother and sister. Oh. Um mm, I'm gonna say I, I only know the, ca- the characters' names. I'm gonna say Catherine and um her husband in the show who fish in the percolator. Nope. Patrick, you got to guess. Log Lady and her husband? No, uh, it's Ed and Nadine. Really? Which is why I changed it from love interest, because uh, to couple. Yeah, Ed, Everett McGill, plays Daddy, and Wendy Roby, who played Nadine, plays Mommy in Under the Stairs. And then, um, big spoiler, um, Mommy and Daddy are brother and sister in The People Under mm. the Stairs. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> There's Patrick is from Alabama, so your family is actual Alabama grads. This is, oh no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. but well, yeah, okay, but no, they're not. They're Auburn grads. <laughs> oh. All right, fair. Well, War Dam, <sighs> it's okay. War Dam, keep it in the fam. All of our family trees are wreaths. It's okay. <laughs> Nice. Sorry, I did not mean to steal your thunder, and that wasn't planned, but um, I thought because of like my recent Wes Craven kick, uh, it'd be a little fun. Are his movies any good? Who, Wes Craven? Uh, yeah, across the board, or is it just a couple? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, like, so <laughs> I think Scream is actually incredibly good. Mm-hmm. Um, Last House on the Elf is Last House on the Left is fine. I like that one, too. I'm not a huge Nightmare on Elm Street fan, but I also realize it's important. Like, right. if we're going 80s horror movies, I'm Halloween through and through. Mm-hmm. Now, I think things improve upon Halloween. You know, John Carpenter with Halloween kind of sets the tone, and then others build upon it. But with what Wes Carpenter does with Scream, and it takes this whole concept of, like, the final girl slasher and, like, changes the rules. Like, Nev Campbell loses her virginity in Scream. Like, that's a no-no. But it, right. it like perverts it and changes on its head and then comes out with this amazing uh yeah scream is rock solid yeah okay not not being um hyperbolic um or like fucking around or anything i I legitimately like scream as a movie nice all right um cool all right so uh we'll get to uh a second bonus (laughs) we'll get to the real trivia now (laughs) uh now this one is a little bit tailored toward patrick because it's nice to have him back um, so here we go. You ready? Always. Okay. Twin Peaks season one. Okay. Which Auburn quarterback passed for the most touchdowns in a single <laughs> season? Bonus if you can tell me the year and the number of touchdowns. It was it wasn't Cam Newton and it wasn't twenty ten. I wish it was Cam Newton in twenty ten, but I think and it's not Pat Sullivan. Was it Pat Sullivan? Pat Sullivan in 76? Um, well, I'm hoping it's Cam Newton in 2010, because that's what my Googling told me. It might be Cam Newton in 2010. Uh, quarterback, touchdown, record, single season. I bet it's I bet it's Cam. Uh, yeah, Cam Newton. Throwing or all, per- all touchdowns? Uh, nope, it wasn't it, all, all purpose, all, okay. all touchdowns. Uh, th- all right, if it had been all, sorry. Yes. All oh, because I said pass. I'm sorry. Yes. Who scored the most touchdowns? Yeah, definitely Cam Newton. Cam Newton. Yeah, 2010 is the right answer. And do you want to guess how many touchdowns he scored? Thirty-two. That's a lot. Matt, do you want to guess how many? No. What the fuck does that have to do with Twin Peaks? <laughs> 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 nothing oh. <laughs> that's the joke uh matt did you want to take a guess how many touchdowns he scored 27 27 oh no 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 he threw for 30 touchdowns jeez uh-huh. he rushed for 20 yeah oh my gosh and he caught a pass for one so he scored I... 51 touchdowns that year and he threw oh so i was right about the 30 yeah okay he was a machine god yeah 2010 and is that the year they won the national we did. We beat Oregon. Michael Dyer was not down. We just lost all of our Oregon uh, fans. <laughs> um, and yeah, that was a great year. That was all right. Yeah. 
2010. Very nice. All right. So having that behind us, we are ready to get started on English Eerie. <laughs> Did you pivot to that after I dropped a Twin Peak trivia? Or was that really going to be the trivia tonight? That was really going to be the trivia tonight. <laughs> I love it. More damn baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because Patrick hasn't been on in a while. No, no, I'm 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 not complaining. I was just curious. Like what? what yeah, probably. it's it's been like like a month and a half, right? Or has it been longer yeah. than that? Like it's been entirely it's too been long. A minute for sure. It's been a little while. Yeah, uh, yeah. Life. And then, you know, Matt, we can feel free now to give Patrick shit for not finishing all of Twin Peaks in the last month and a half. So, yeah, Patrick, um, I watched the pilot last night. <laughs> <laughs> so I can decompress. I, I think you're like you're lapping me at a rate of like three to one right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, as we said, we're gonna try a little English eerie tonight. Um, we played this last year. Matt and I did it a couple of times. I think I had a great time. I don't know. I assume you did as well. Yeah, I loved it. And as a reminder, we kind of did it two ways. We kind of did it rules as written as an entire collaborative approach. And I took, we did one scenario. And then I took another scenario and turned that into like a GM'd session. Right, right. And that, and it worked. It worked really well. I thought both are, are awesome experiences. A uh, great game for sure. Yes. And so what tonight we're going to do is we're going to return to that GM thing. I will be the GM. You guys will be uh, cooperating on the main character. Um, if you wanted to go to the character, uh, Patrick came up with a character for us. Douglas Doogie Huxley. And were you guys comfortable just rolling with this character or did you want to make tweaks? No, this is great. Okay. <laughs> I read it earlier today. I mean, Patrick, I don't want to speak for you, but I liked it. No, I mean, any any changes you want to make? I did realize you said in the prompt that you sent us, you said you need to come up with some kind of property developer occupation. And I just put property developer so if anybody has any other suggestions for that <laughs> um it is 1968 in england so i don't know i figured it didn't matter too much okay um and we could just roll with it but yeah. the basic idea with character creation just for the people that haven't watched the other ones is that essentially you have to do a couple of steps you have to come up with three fears you have to come up with three defining features and then you have to allocate basically 10 points toward two stats And those two stats are Resolve and Spirit. Now, the way the game works is it's just a series of card draws that sort of every two make up one day. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to alternate. One person draws one, narrates a bit of the story. Next person draws the next. Uh, The cards might have obstacles. The obstacles might have numbers on them. That's a number you have to beat on a D10. Uh, And there's a couple ways to do that. You just roll a straight D10 or, as I mentioned, you have Resolve. Before the roll, you can decide to spend a resolve point and you get a plus two to the roll. After the, you roll the die, if you realize, oh crap, I need to get a little bit of a boost, you can spend a resolve to get one. I don't think you can do both. I think you have to decide to do a straight roll okay. and then you can spend a resolve to get a plus one. Or beforehand, you can say, you know what, this is important. I want that plus two. After a certain number of cards, I think it's five you come up with a gray lady the gray lady is going to increase the tension and also what happens is you have to sort of get through it and the way to get through it is either to spend resolve or the other stat spirit think of resolve as sort of like this like a benny you can use it as a resource it helps you get through things the spirit is sort of like your hit points and for each scenario in the book there's a spirit table that tells you if you have such and such amount of spirit left over at the end of the story, here's an option available for you for an ending. If you have zero, you get, it's hard to call it the bad ending because it's a horror story. So, mm-hmm. you know, bad is not always bad in terms of storytelling, but it is the bad ending. So that's basically the whole game. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to, um, just decide first and foremost how you would like to allocate those 10 points towards resolve and spirit. You can do any combination. You can do one, nine, six, four, whatever you want to do. I kind of remember not to gamify too much. I kind of remember six, four working well, Patrick. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I remember that from my listens. So we don't, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm either six, six, four or five and five. Honestly, let's do six, four, Okay, six, four. Okay. Which one's higher? 
Resolve. Resolve. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out six resolve and four spirits. There's also um, one, two, three, four, five, six on the character sheet. We can set this up to be six out of six and four out of four. You guys should both have access to that character sheet if you want. Um, but I'm also going to make a pool at the bottom <laughs> just to help me remember. I just remember last time we played, I introduced a character and Art's like, he fucking killed him on the first yeah. scene. <laughs> yeah. I just, that just came back to me like right yeah. now. And it's like, was like, oh yeah, I'm kind of remember this now. Oh yeah. Art killed the guy I was going to use for plot devices. That's right. Um, I'm a wild card, baby. Uh, what I'm, I'm trying to remember bitch. is. What's that? Payback's a bitch. That's right. <laughs> so I think it's every, f you do five cards and then the sixth is the gray lady. I think that's how it works. But I'm not sure. Recall. What's that? I don't remember. I don't remember if it was the fifth card. or the, So you do 18 cards? Uh, yeah, there's, I think, 19 total. But, um, yeah. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we are going to... If you guys want, if you go into the browse macro directory at the bottom there, next to the numbers, mm -hmm. if you want to pull out the roll Erie England card draw and then the roll gray lady, you can bring those down to your nice. toolbar. Um, and then we just have to decide on who wants to roll first. So I think at some point, Patrick, one of us should take the, the early part of the day and another one take the later part of the day. And at some point we should switch. Okay. Uh, but, but it doesn't matter to me. Do you wanna you wanna set the table at the beginning and then we'll flip? Sure. Sounds good to me. Okay. So if you want, go ahead and roll on the Erie England card draw. Uh, question: mm -hmm. Art, are you running your own scenario or are you running one out of the book? Uh, that is actually a good good point. Uh, we are running one out of the book called The Inn. And actually, let me set it up. I was gonna say, I, if it's out of the book, I think there's usually an intro. Yeah, here we go. So I'm going to read the intro, and the date is 1968. It's late autumn in the Cotswolds, a vast area of the countryside near Bristol and Oxford. You and your business associate, Rebecca Thecky, are traveling to the picturesque village of Bibbury in search of property development opportunities in the area. You are staying in the Faversham Inn, a quaint, cozy bed and breakfast run by an elderly couple called Marjorie and Arthur Taylor. You are to stay in the village for two weeks in order to secure a much-needed contract for your business, Otherwise, you will fall into liquidation. A couple of nights in the fabric room, you will begin to hear strange noises in the dead of So, it's seemingly happening somewhere in the end. There's something not quite right here. Something not quite right with Art's internet. <laughs> um, all right, so the server should be up and running again. I'm back in. Tim Curry is an actual human Muppet, and I love it. <laughs> have Have you listened to uh, Sabriel? No, it's narrated by Tim Curry. It okay. is a um, it's a fantasy. It's kind of a weird world where this world exists next to like a, a, a like almost our real world. Okay. Um, and but like you exist, and there's necromancers and undead, and this mm -hmm. girl is tasked with being a necromancer that challenges the undead and her tools are these different bells. Mm -hmm. And so like, there's a bell of binding and there's like the ninth bell is like this big heavy bell. When you do that, it's like death, yeah. but it's narrated by Tim Curry. And there's this character named Moggit and how he does Moggit. It is one of the best audiobooks, all three books series I've ever listened to. And, and like the story is already amazing. Yeah. But it is Tim Curry and it is amazing. And I could not recommend it more. Uh, uh, shoot me by Garth Nix. Shoot me a text with that, or shoot yeah. it in the Discord so I can. I'm always. I've got like a bazillion Audible credits at this point, so. Yeah, yeah. Or go check it out on Libby or whatever. Anyone I, listening, like Sabriel is just worth. If you're at all interested in, uh, in fantasy, go check mm -hmm. it out. All right, Art. Did we buy you enough time? Yep. Uh, server should be up and running. Everything should be back online. Hopefully, I'm. You you're not cutting out for me. Right? Hopefully, I'm not cutting out for you. You sound clean. Okay, yeah, something must have been going on with the the server and it jammed everything up. Bye bye bye, babe. Let's drop. All right. I don't know, so Patrick sounded bad there. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking? Hello and welcome to Black Lodge Trivia Night. 
Wow. All right. So uh, who would like to go first? I'll take the first set of like daytime shifts. Okay. So go ahead and uh, roll on the. You got an environmental envi- environment. Blah, 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 blah. Environmental. Uh, obstructs. So the number there is a seven, which means you're going to be rolling a D10 in order not to get swamped by whatever's happening. Um, you have to get a seven or above. So what we can do is you're there. Um, it say it's late fall. Uh, you've been staying at the, uh, the Faversham Inn and you come down in the morning uh, for some breakfast and um, it's just like unholy chilly in the room. Uh, and what you, what's the name of the proprietor? Pro, 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 gosh, <coughs> proprietors again. Uh, Arthur and Marjorie Taylor. And uh, you can see them over by like the like a, a big fireplace trying to get a fire started. Usually they don't do it this early in the morning. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, you know, so you can sort of see like outside, it seems like surprisingly like hazy. You can't see what's going on outside through mm-hmm. the windows at the moment. And um, you. Oh, good morning. Ugh. Yeah. I feel this one in my bones. And but... um, yeah. And so they're like, and you can see like behind the bar, you can sort of see, you know, the bottles, you can see a picture of a, of a, of a man in uniform who you've learned is their son who died in World War II. Mm. Um, during your stay here for the last couple of days, you've made conversation over meals. And uh, yeah, they're trying to get a fire started. And um, I slipped the like, I don't know, me and maybe a little bit of a wisecrack. I slipped the, the son like a little salute while they're busy with the fire. Like it's like a little game, like because he's such like, do they even acknowledge me when I, when I mention how cold it is? Uh, yeah, maybe they're like the, the, the husband is, is kind of quiet and he gives you a nod and he's sort of like, you know, smiles a little bit and then goes back to, you know, sort of getting some, some paper under the logs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Marjorie is a little colder. I mean, in a, like Mm -hmm. personality wise, she, you know, she's all more business. So, Mm -hmm. uh, and you start to realize outside, um, there's actually been a blizzard. That's why oh, you're having trouble seeing outside the I window. I mean, I like, I go over and like rub some of the, the frost off. Mm-hmm. Wow. Arthur, did you get a load of this? And he's like, I know. It's, uh, I don't know if there's ever been a recorded storm like this at this time of year. Is it ice or is it snow? Um, what would you like it to be? Uh, ice is worse, right? Let's go ice. Let's say it's an ice storm. Okay. Like, cause getting like you said it's you said it's fall, right? So it was yeah. probably October. Yeah. Yeah. So like I feel like a full on blizzard would be even weirder. So let's go. Like everything's iced over, so it's like a death trap out there. And uh, do they have do they have electricity here? Uh, yeah, yeah, they do. Okay. Is it being affected at all by the ice storm? Uh, would you like it to be? Maybe flickering. Well, maybe the lights. I like go over and I rub at the window. I'm like Arthur, get a load of this. And maybe I like I come over and like try to put my hands like next to the fire to like try to get warmed up and then the lights flicker above us nice all right so give me a roll on the environmental ob- uh ob- obstructs okay. which I, is the storm is, is yeah the, i assume yeah. not just the the cold um i would it's a seven mm-hmm. is that and just remind i know there's a scale right is there is seven on the low end or the high end? I think it's on the high end. I think it's five, six, seven are the options. Okay. All right. I would deep. like to spend one resolve here. Okay. So. Yep. And then go ahead and add two to your die roll. Add in two. Mm-hmm. All right. One D10 plus, plus two. 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 <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you got uh, it. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. So as oh, I, s- I, I looked at the six, sorry, the reason I said all listeners, is cause I looked at the result, not the modified number. I thought, right. Uh, yeah. So with the plus two, you got an eight, which beats the seven, which means that, you know, as I mentioned in the intro, uh, 45 minutes ago, after, before my computer shot the bed, 
Um, you know, you've been hearing, you know, soft thumps and groans somewhere in the inn, and mm-hmm. something's not quite right. So, uh, so, so I overcome the, the obstacle, right? Yeah. So the ice is not going to stop you if you're going to investigate something. Okay. So I guess my going back to that original intro and all of us is is my immediate concern in the or our when I say me, that's Patrick and I as one human. Um, we're trunks in Goku hmm. as yes. one. There it is. Um, are we are we hoping to acquire the inn, or are we just staying here? I might have missed that. I think uh, the basics are you're you're staying there and sort of exploring the town, looking for a property development opportunity. I mean, if you want it to be the inn, you could be trying to buy the owners out. Maybe that's why the wife is. What do you think, Patrick? Chilly. I think we should be more scummy than that. Like, I think, like, we should be trying to buy, like, the old mill or something in town. Like, the and- old mill that implies the town, that employs the town, and we're going to turn it into, um, we're going to develop it into, like, a summer getaway yeah. camp for families. Exactly. That yeah. Wealthy uh, families that will outpl- that will push all of the, the townspeople out. Yeah. 100%. So, so I hear a moan, like I'm, I'm shivering, the fire gets going and I'm watching the storm and the lights flicker. And then maybe we hear, I hear that noise again. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what does that moan sound like? Art? Are you going to make me do it? Aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to know, like, cause I don't want to be like way off and it's like, <laughs> yeah, let's say the moan's like, <gasps> <laughs> yeah. And the, the, it's <laughs> okay. The answer to the mystery is that Marjorie and Arthur have a very healthy sexual <laughs> relationship. Um, Let's say it's like. Uh, uh, and have I asked them, like, have I seen anyone else staying at the inn? Yes. So obviously, again, because the intro was 45 minutes ago, you're staying here with your business partner, Rebecca Thecky. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Rebecca. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, you have seen another woman. Yeah. Not Rebecca. Besides my assistant. Are there other? Yeah. Y- yeah let's say there's one other guest, okay. um, but you haven't really gotten to know her too well. You know her name is Emma Busby B-U-S-B-Y but you don't know too much about her at the moment (laughs) There is a very immature part of me that is having a hard time with these last names Um, Ah, sounds like uh, that chill has reached Miss Busby upstairs and I don't know if they hear it or not but uh, (laughs) (laughs) What did they say anything? Um you're asking. Uh, they're I like, just make a passing comment, like, "Oh, sounds like uh, sounds like Miss Busby is feeling the." Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, you. Um, you know, again, um, Marjorie sort of like doesn't give you even any hint of humanity, mm-hmm. like even like a huh, and just she just trying. yeah, she goes into the kitchen, and um, Arthur gets the fire lit. Nice. And he he sort of smiles. He's like, "Oh no, you know these." the drafts in these old buildings. If it's not the drafts, it's the pipes. And uh, he um, he says, you know, like, if you want, breakfast will be ready pretty soon. Ah, oh, that would, uh, tell you what, something something warm would be would be lovely, old chap. How's the, uh, you got tea on in the kettle? Mm, mm-hmm, yep. Coffee yep. on yet? And I'll Marjorie go over just... to, like, the big thing and tap at it. Yeah, yeah, let's say, um, uh, let's say you hear the, the uh, would you like it to be coffee or do you want to hear the whistle of the kettle? Uh, let's do whistle of the kettle. Yeah. So in the uh, other room, you hear. I'll, <laughs> I'll step in the other room and like while Marjorie's futzing with it, I'll grab the kettle and like start steeping my own tea. And then, uh, hey, Arthur, if if you would uh, be a chap, if if Rebecca, um, if Miss Thicket wakes up. Uh, please advise her. I'm gonna go try and start the. Uh... And, uh, Lori, not the two. <laughs> Wait. Uh, or, 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 I'll go out and I've got a steaming cup of tea. And a, yeah, what's up? You're you're cutting in and out like a like a space cadet there, buddy. I am. Yeah. Impossible. I I failed to. I, I refuse to acknowledge that. Art, did you hear it too, or was it on my end? I, I confess I, I couldn't understand anything you just said before, Lori. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm holding my book like to the side so I can read it, and I was oh. holding it over my candle. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um. So I'll mention to Arthur. 
uh, Arthur. And now, like, I, so I have a cup of tea, and like, I, I completely interfered with Marjorie's workflow. Like, I'm not being a jerk, but it's like, oh, I want my tea now. So I go in. I've got the steaming hot uh, mug of tea, and I'm dipping my tea bag. And uh, say, Arthur, uh, we're gonna pop outside real quick and just uh, check on the truck. And I think that's when I'll, you know, I'll do the. I'll do the Shaun of the Dead thing. I'll, I'll slip a little bit on the ice. It's not blood this time. I'll slip a little bit ah, and like scorch my hand some. And then this is where I think we, we face the environment and leave it open to whether we're, we're here at the inn or I guess we've settled on the mill where we're going to go. But uh, what I would say is that the trucks start fine. Uh, I'm not saying that the roads are safe to drive, but at least it's not freezing over. Um, and uh, I guess we're property bills. It's probably not a truck. Um, Actually, you know what? I, I, if I could just say, let's make the business a local shop. Just okay, to, uh, so we're buying a local shop. Yeah. So I go out and I start the car, um, and then I ask Arthur. I say, "Hey, do you mind if I pull this into the lobby to park?" <laughs> <laughs> I just assumed it was already in there, <laughs> um, folks. That's a throwback. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have you back, pa- Patrick. <laughs> I love being here. Yeah, and so I think I think where we'll end for the day, unless Art, obviously, or Patrick, you guys have anything to add, um, is me stand, or us standing out there, and I've got the uh, um, the sedan all fired up. Okay, yeah. So let's say you, you realize that because you overcame the obstacle, the ice is not going to stop you from going somewhere if you want to go. Uh, well, the roads may be treacherous, but at least the car works. Is my Okay, we'll we'll call it that. Yeah, and so we'll have it so that you are. But Art, as mm-hmm. I'm standing out there, all of a sudden there's a shatter of glass. Oh! And Rebecca jumps from the window, <laughs> 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 and then the car explodes. But little did we know, Marjorie was inside. <laughs> Miss Bust and Miss Busty was in the back seat, and they burn alive. Do something with your story now, <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> All right. So I should have been bringing up these mood pieces. Yeah. So you're staying at the inn. Um, so you're outside. You got the car started. Let's say like you can see Arthur and Marjorie's car under like a charred bodies. Like a, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, go on. <laughs> <laughs> under like I'm a glowing. car park, like just like a little roof uh, with open sides. And then you also see like, you know, back away is like an old barn. Um, and otherwise, it's just a country inn, and uh, yeah. So that's that's the first card. Is that what you want your card to be? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, so Patrick, if you can now roll the Erie England card draw table. Okay. And we got an environmental obstructs four. So what that means is you're going to have to beat a four. Okay. Um, so you can decide if you want to. We're raw. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna raw dog it. Nice. Was there something with double cards too, or did that not matter with environmental cards? Um, oh, oh, oh! You're absolutely right. So, Patrick, here's the deal: mm-hmm. because you just did an environmental obstructs, what we can do is you can roll again, and we can set this aside to be the next card. So, if you want to do something different, we can set this aside, and when Matt takes back over, no, I'll do a, I'll do. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna burden him with another environmental obstruct. Obstruct. I'll, okay. uh, I'll take the roll. So here we go. It's a six. So that is a nice. pass. Okay. Uh, so tell me what you are. So, you know, when Matt left off, you know, the morning was spent sort of, you know, getting, getting tea, on. breakfast, mm-hmm. um, and then making sure the car started. And so you, you and let's by, say by this point, you know, like your, your associate, Rebecca Thecky, she's come downstairs. She's had her breakfast. Mm hmm. You could see like something, her eyes are maybe a little bloodshot. Something's a little off with her. You're not sure what. Uh, so what would you like to be doing? I think while I'm, while I'm waiting for, <laughs> are you okay, Matt? Yeah. <laughs> we're losing, we're losing Matt. <laughs> Did I do something? No. What's up, Matt? What's up? No, it's, just keep going. Just keep going, please. <laughs> So, I mean, what the fuck? This is very serious. <laughs> no, just so I'm everyone knows. Sorry, please, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Nothing. Is it Rebecca Thecky? <laughs> just keep going. So, is Rebecca? Is she young? Is she old? Like, 
Uh, she goes by Becky. It's Becky. Becky. <laughs> Stop. Uh, is she young? Uh, she's a little younger than you. <laughs> All right. And then it's 1968. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Uh, what do I want to be doing with the back half of the day? I think she's taking for fucking ever to come downstairs uh, and eat her breakfast. Like she's uh, like I'm sitting outside, like freezing my ass off, checking the damn uh, time on the watch. I'm like, you know, Jesus. So I'm going to get bored and I'm going to I'm going to walk towards the barn. And I think that the. I don't think that I think the environmental thing as I go to the barn and like start like checking it out is I think I hear some of that groaning. Actually, um, because we're doing it GM style. Yes. Sorry. I'm going to tell you what the obstruction is. OK. Um, so and then you can figure out what you want to do. OK. So you're going to go check out the barn. Yes. OK. So let's say you're going to check on the barn and when you get to the door there's no windows to the barn but the door is locked you can't seem to get it open is the I'm gonna say <laughs> now at some point I'm gonna say you can open it because you overcame the obstruction but um, yeah. for the moment we're, we're gonna start with the door being locked okay um I'm gonna say there's a garden gnome to the that's covered in ice like in the middle of the yard and I'm gonna be like as I'm sitting there smoking a cigarette I, well my mom used to used to keep the spare key under the hat of the gnome and I'm gonna like kick the gnome because it's covered in ice and uh, and like the gnome's head's gonna roll off but the key's gonna be under the gnome and so okay. I'm gonna pick up the key from under the gnome and be like yeah. Old country types, they're all the same. And, uh, you know, like, try to put the gnome's head back on, like, just so. And and then I'll Got lock it. the door. Okay, perfect. And just for the listeners, we, we should have done this before. When I was reading the intro, like I said, you picked three fears and three defining features for your characters. The fears that um, were picked were shame of financial ruin, claustrophobic, and growing paranoia of being double-crossed or cheated, especially by Rebecca. Mm-hmm. The defining features are always wears a well-tailored suit, a chain smoker, and always checks his watch, which is a family heirloom. So just to put it out there for the listeners. Weird that uh, you guys got me to a T. Yeah. <laughs> chain smoking. <laughs> chain smoking. Watch. Deathly afraid of Rebecca double crossing. <laughs> <laughs> Becky Thecky. She'll get you every time. Goddamn Becky Thecky. Um, okay. So, yeah. So you get the, the key and you manage to unlock the barn. Mm-hmm. And you notice inside the barn is kind of nothing. You you see some like it, 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 it's not like it's, it's a working barn for like horses. Mm-hmm. It's not like they're really using it for storage per se. It's just like an empty barn with like rotted pieces of wood. You can sort of see that it's it's really old and it's not in its best shape. Mm-hmm. Um, and so mm-hmm. as you're doing that. Um, you see, you, you don't see, you hear Marjorie say, excuse me, mm-hmm. Mr. Huxley, um, if you'd please, you know, stop going through our things. It's bad enough you encroached by, you know, pouring yourself some tea, uh, quite rudely, but if you could please step away from my private property and, um, either come inside or leave, do whatever you're going to do, but please, I- I'd ask you to be a little bit more considerate as our guest. And I'll casually, like, again, cigarette dangling from the corner, like, look around behind me and be like, oh, but Marm, I'm a paying customer. Like, I should be, you know, this is, it's a full service inn, isn't it? Shouldn't I be, are there not any, any amenities in the barn here? (laughs) Um... (laughs) And she's like, sir, just please. No, it's not. You're welcome to your room. You're welcome to use of the bathroom. We serve you meals, but you don't get free range of our property. Please, sir. You know, please have some respect and, um, you know, have some boundaries. And he'll, I'll, 
saunter out and like look her up and down very slowly. Margie, have you always lived here? Has the stick been lodged this far up your up your ass the entire time that you've lived here? <laughs> um, she is. Ah, yes. I should show you. Uh, she is quite upset at this point. Mm hmm. And, um, she's like, I know you paid in advance for a number of days, but I'm not sure this is worth it. I may need to speak to my husband about this. And she says, please get away from my barn and, uh, either go inside or get in your car and leave. And I'll, I'll, I'll chuckle and walk back inside and say, I think I'll have another cup of tea. Mm. All right. Which is honestly the biggest uh, offense yeah, in Mark yeah. Cruz's eyes. Like, <laughs> doesn't matter that you just told her she's a stick up her butt. Like, we poured our own tea. <laughs> poured your own tea. Yeah. So I'll I'll go in and perch up next to the fireplace and and make my own cup of tea. And is Becky in there? Yeah. Let's say when you go back inside, uh, Becky Thecky is in there. Thicky Thecky Becky. Ooh. And yeah, she's um, she's not only is she in there. Um, Emma Busby, the other guest, is also in there, and you can see that she is um, a little bit more buttoned up. Um, and as you're coming in. There's sort of like a, a gentleman, you can't quite see his face, but there's a gentleman sort of with a with a large brimmed hat. And he's sort of sharing the table with her, and he's just finishing up his meal. And um they sort of make their way outside after their meal and go to a car and start to sort of drive off. Emma and the gentleman do? Yes. I'll uh, I'll I'll post up next to Becky Thecky. Uh, what were the who's that guy? And um, she leans over, and again she you know she seems very tired. Her eyes look a little bloodshot, and um, she's like, "Well, grandfather, I think they're having an affair." And you, she's like this sarcastic tone to her. Mm. Um, sort of like it's obvious what they're doing. Um, so either stop pretending. And then she just sort of goes back to like scribbling some notes in a, in a book. I mean, you can't quite see what she's doing. Mm. Oh, bookish Becky Thecky. I, uh, I'll like lean over and look at the, at the book or try to anyway, just all up in her personal space. What, what, what are you, what are you taking notes on there? You're muted. Oh, she's like, come on. And she sort of like pulls it a little closer to her. Um, so you can't quite see what's there. Writing poetry again, Becky Fecky. And she's like, not at all. And we have a long day ahead of us. Let's um, let's let's get to it. I'll uh, you can drive and I'll take uh, I'll pour myself another cup of tea <laughs> and go post up in the in the passenger seat. Wait, is it evening? Uh, it's the second half of the day, so let's say it it's, could be. I mean, it could be afternoon or something. Yeah, and then yeah. We'll, we'll assume whatever you guys decide to do here is how you finish the day, and yeah, then we'll yeah. go to the next day. Yeah, I figure at this point we'll we'll go and look at the. What are we buying, Matt? We buying a bakery, a horse. Let's buy glue a glue business from all the forces that don't exist anymore. Hmm. Wasn't well, it a shop? Yeah, it's like a local shop. Oh, so it's a glue shop. It's a glue yeah. shop. Yeah, we're buying all the. Right. Horse hair brushes and glue. All right. Okay. So that's uh, so you sort of take care of, of, of some of the business that you're in town for, and that's how you spend the rest of the day. And you know, evening passes. It's a meal. The night comes, and again, you're hearing oh, and like boom, boom. So you know your your sleep's a little disturbed. But uh, then, whoever would like to roll the next card, go ahead. Matthew. Secondary harmed. Mm. Oh no! Becky, uh, Becky. Let's see. Okay, so Matt, um, yeah. 
It's the next day, but what time of day would you like it to be? Uh, I like the early morning. Early morning, okay. Yeah. It, like sort I like of first being an early again. riser. Um, despite being an asshole, and maybe, and uh, anyways, he's an early riser. Okay. Um. There we go. All right. Uh. So, you come downstairs, and who? Still it, cold. Let's say it's still cold. It has warmed up. Like the the storm has kind of passed. Uh. And who would you like to see harmed? We've got Rebecca, we've got mm. Arthur, Marjorie, and Emma. Those are it's the people. Marjorie. It's Marjorie. For sure. Marjorie, okay. But so, Art, do I go down there? Before you tell me what happens, mm-hmm. I want to set the scene a little bit here. So we go down there, and like the, the day before, right, it's cold, the, the storm's setting in. I hear the moaning, but it, and I think it's one of the Becky or whoever else. Um, is it the same scene? Like, do I go down? Is the is the inn empty, or are Marjorie and Arthur already up and at him? Um, so let's say, uh, is it like extremely early, or is it like a normal early? Like, did something like you couldn't sleep, so you went down to get yourself a cup of tea, kind of like it? It's it's not absurdly early. It's earlier than I'd like to get up. I I woke up to the moaning, um, and so it's five forty five, and I set my alarm for six thirty. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you... So it's dark because it's winter time, right? I mean, we got the... Yeah, it would still be dark. Um, and what state would you like to find Marjorie in? Is she dead? Is Nebraska. She in... <laughs> <laughs> Never. Any of the other 49? Um, um, yeah, you know, um, no, I won't kill her because that's ridiculous to do to your GM when they're... <laughs> when you're prepping a story. Um, I would like to find her um, severely injured, like a serious something has happened. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, let's say um, you you come downstairs, and again, it's it's let's say it's chilly because they haven't started the fire yet, but it's not crazy like it was yesterday. And I'm slow to realize. Like, I'm over by the fire, and, like, I, I poke it with the fire poker, and I'm just like, oh, blimey, why is, why is there no fire going yet? And the, like, I haven't, like, I'm a little groggy. So, like, mm-hmm. even if she's, like, nailed to a cross stigmata style or something like <laughs> that, like, I don't realize it because, like, uh, you know, I wipe the fog off the window. I peer out at the truck. I go over the fire. I poke it with a sticker. I, I pick up the kettle or, or like, the, the coffee pot or whatever and, like, see if there's anything left in it. But. Okay. You're like stepping over her. her. <laughs> and, and it's the it's the Shaun of the Dead thing again, except this time it's not ice. It is yeah. blood again. <laughs> um. So yeah, you um, as you're sort of, you know, like okay, the fire's not really going yet. So you sort of poke at it. You get yourself, you know, you start the kettle, and um, you sort of see out of the corner of your eye, Marjorie on the floor, and she's not like drenched evil dead style in blood but you can tell she's got blood like she's got cuts scrapes um you know all sorts of injuries and like you know she's bleeding and she's quite injured oh well i mean marjorie marjorie and i'll uh, i'll pull a tablecloth off one of the like nearby tables okay um yeah patrick what do you got do you pull it where all of the glasses stay upright, <laughs> or do you, or do the glasses all fall down? I'm sorry. Um, I like push them off. I don't even try. Like I push them into the chair and like the ketchup bottle. Well, I don't know. They probably don't have ketchup in England. I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, vinegar. Cats yeah, up. I was gonna say they probably have like the vinegar. The vinegar bottle falls over. <laughs> um, the eighty thousand tea <laughs> mugs. Uh, no, I just kind of like brush them aside. I grab it. And I grab some napkins and I like I. I don't move her, but I kind of cradle her at Marjorie, Marjorie. And I, I start yelling for Ar- Arthur, Arthur. And I, I look around like, do I see anything? Or is she just like, you say like scratch marks? Yeah. So he, he scratches, cuts, like contusions. Maybe do I see like a weapon? Bites. Does no. it look like animal marks or does it look like? Does it look like animal marks? Um, like, Is there like tearing to her clothes and stuff and like a pattern like? You know, three claw marks through her clothes or anything like that. Pattern, no, but her, some of her claw, cl- clothes are ripped, like not like shredded, like you would from like w- claws. But um, Arthur, Arthur, Marjorie, 
Audrey, stay with me now. Is she responsive at all? Uh, she's kind of half in, kind of have her eyes rolling back. Becky! Be and I'm just like, um, is there any response in the hotel? Yeah, let's say after a minute, you know, Arthur comes down and uh, he's like, good God, what? An oh. And I'm covered. I'm covered in her blood now, right? Yeah. And like he a, suddenly sees her and his eyes go wide and he rushes to her, rushes to her side and sort of cradles her. And Arthur, starts, Arthur. And I like, oh, where's the phone? Where's the phone? And he, he, he and then he points behind the bar, the bar. Um. So I get up and I, I don't vault the bar, but like I grab the post at the end of the bar and kind of spin around it. And I, I pick it up. Operator, operator. Kate, What's the number for 999? <laughs> Exactly. No, I'm not. Operator, connect me. All right. Um, yeah, so let's say the, the rest of the, the morning is, you know, help comes. A lovely breakfast. <laughs> yeah, everybody again stepping over her while they're like, thunk chest compressions. <laughs> um, and the rest of the morning, let's say the rest of the morning goes by. <laughs> yeah. So, but we'll say like the rest of the morning is, you know, the ambulance arrives and, um, you know, they take her and Arthur, you know, is like, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to go with her. And um, he sort of, as he sort of, you know, I, I have to go with her, he sort of checks his watch. I check my watch at the same time. And you can, let's say it's like, you know, a little bit before noon and he sort of looks like he's doing a quick calculation. I've got five till noon, Arthur, what about you? No. <laughs> and, and and then he, he goes with Marjorie um, you know, sort of holding her hand and saying, Is oh. the calculation weird or off putting? Or like, is his pause while he contemplates? Why Why would I notice that? Uh, because he sort of looked at his watch and then he sort of looked up like he was trying to do like some quick math in his head. Like he's doing visible he, math in his head. He takes yeah. his shoes off so he can use his fingers and toes <laughs> to do the math. <laughs> right. Um, and so that's why, like, in the middle of like his wife is here severely injured. Right. It, why does he care? What why does he does care? He about care? The time? Right. Arthur, Arthur, it'll be fine. We'll keep an eye on things. Um, you, you go see after Marjorie. You, and he's it'll like, be yes. fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, you may have to help yourself for dinner, but I will be back this evening. Arthur, please do not worry about a second. I can start a kettle. <laughs> and he looks over at Becky. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that came across where my I might I meant is like we're so incompetent at anything with food that it's like puppy dog eyes at Becky. Not I didn't mean <laughs> right. The it's sexism. nineteen. It's yeah. It's nineteen. It is the sixties. I get that, but it was more a comment of our incompetency in any kind of kitchen utensil than yes. anything else. But All then right. you looked at her for her. Yeah, it's okay. All right, you misogynist. <laughs> not. Not, damn it. Not what I meant. <laughs> All right, Patrick, why don't you roll up the next card? A secondary obstruction. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> Becky tells us to make our own damn tea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think uh, it's a secondary character obstruction. Um, so why don't you. So the number you have to beat is a four. Um, so you have to decide if you want to use a resolve token now for two, or you no. just want to go for the roll. Okay. We'll just go for a roll. And here we go. That's uh, a okay, a 10. You succeed. Okay. okay. So the characters in this room, or if you go into town, whatever mm -hmm. you want to do. Um, well, let's say... <laughs> hmm. I think... <laughs> I'm just yeah, thinking, like, I'm thinking we would, that was shocking, but I think we'd try and go about our day as normal as we can after that. So maybe we're at the shop or okay. something shop involved. Like, that's probably a good point because, again, even though we're not soulless and we do care what happens to Marjorie, right? Sure. Like our, our concern is still avoiding financial ruin. Right. 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 Okay. So let's say you go to the local shop mm -hmm. and. When you last had interactions at the local shop, it seemed like, you know, yesterday things were going sort of smoothly, some progress. Mm -hmm. um, everyone was getting along. Uh, but while you're there this time, um, 
Rebecca sort of surprises you with some... Well, what would you like her to surprise you with? I think she is... So usually there's a bit of role reversal happening, I think. I think I'm usually the bad cop in the situations trying to get a low ball offer in like, oh, the wood, you know, like like pushing on wood in stores or like kicking baseboards or something. Be like, ah, this is, you know, the there's termite damage in this. You know, we're going to take five grand off the price. Like, you know, I think that that's kind of my uh, doogie's role. And Becky is there to kind of like, oh, sweetie, like, no, we're going to not, you know, we'll cut you a deal. Like, but I think she walks into this today and I think she's looking even more tired than she did yesterday. Like she's looking Mm -hmm. exhausted at this point. And I think she walks in and she's in in some kind of high heel or something. And the first thing she does this, you know, we'll call him uh, a Scotty McDougal is sitting behind the, the counter. And McDougal is like trying to, you know, trying to strong arm us waffle. Oh, I'm, you know, this farm's been, this store's been in me family's generations and generations and generations. I just don't know if I can part with it kind of thing. Right. And I think, I think Becky's going to go over and like put a, put a, a heel through the like bar. Like, she's like, this place is falling the fuck apart. Like, we're going to offer you the least amount that we can because this place is a shithole and you don't want to run it and you're an alcoholic and like <laughs> she's she's like she's obviously at her wit's end and is she's the asshole today. All right. And nice. I, yeah. Okay. So let's say uh the meeting then obviously goes quite poorly. Mm-hmm. Um and you can't tell like you're sitting there thinking, you know, Rebecca, you're just as at risk of getting insolvent as I am. I'm not sure why, but you're not quite sure why she seemed to tank this part of the meeting. Mm-hmm. And so you return to the inn and uh, it's sort of an icy sort of atmosphere between you over supper. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, over off to the side is uh, the other guess uh, what was her name emma busby emma, yeah yeah and uh, so she's sort of surprised that like oh there's no dinner service and she just sort of turns around with the man in the with the wide brim hat and uh, they head back out and they're like oh let's go get dinner in town <laughs> and you can sort of see them like playfully touching each other's hands mm-hmm. we come out with porridge like four <laughs> bowls of porridge and we're just like all right loves this will have to do dinner is ser- Oh, I worked so hard on it. Yeah, right. And we did. We yeah. did. We put in a ton of effort. It is burnt to shit. <laughs> All right. Uh, go ahead and then roll the next card. So this is day two. So like I said, every two cards is a day. Um, All right. Secondary harmed. Ooh. So again, uh, what time? Again, it's it could be the middle of the night. It could be early in the morning. It could be later in the day. What time would you like it to be? Ooh. Never mind. It's your card. You want to take this one? Sure. If you don't mind, you want to swap yeah. for it? Okay. I think it's the middle of the night, and I think we hear Emma, like, giggling with the wide-brimmed hat man, like, oh, like, trying to sneak back in from their, their, uh, their tryst in, in town. Mm-hmm. And so it's Emma that gets hurt, like, trying to come into the house uh, or wide brim hat man, but whichever I think it's got to be Emma. Okay, uh, so let's say uh, we'll, we'll make it Emma. It's the middle of the night. Um, yeah. Is, so, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Is it still super icy out? No. Let's say that sort of passed. It okay. was sort of like a, a quick flashing storm, and then it warmed up. Um, and so let's say you. You, you know, you're, you're sort of lightly sleeping uh-huh. and you sort of hear them trying to come in like, oh, shh, 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 giggle, giggle. Shh. And then, you know, you hear the the wide. I'm going to go up to the room and, I'll, and she's like, hey, yeah, I'll be I'll be right up. And she goes like to the washroom on the first floor. Uh-huh. And, you know, you hear a thunk, thunk, thunk as the guy comes into the door, closes. And then all of a sudden from downstairs, you hear something like tip over, crash, a scream. And then it, the scream cuts off halfway. And then it's just dead quiet. 
Yeah, I roll back over and go to sleep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, I'll uh, I'll I'll spring out and I've got the the lighter going like you know like running down the stairs trying to get light like flicking on light switches maybe the light switches aren't working or something and uh, and I go down and and what kind of state is she at? like Miss Emma Miss Emma you know uh, you don't see her and the wide brim hat man also runs down maybe everybody I mean obviously mm-hmm. you know Rebecca would come down. And she looks off. She looks rough. Yeah. Like she hasn't been sleeping at all. And um, you also notice that Arthur's not there. You know, he had checked his watch. He was like, you know, I'll be back for it. And he didn't come mm-hmm. back. You know, maybe he stayed with, you know, who knows. Um, and yeah, Emma is not anywhere to be found. Uh, I'll like check around, like, I'll look out the windows and see, like, I'll look towards the barn. I'll look towards the the cars. Like, we'll do a we'll do a full a full sweep. But like, but you know, Becky, you know, try and try and phone the police or something. You know, like, and you know, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name, sir. Is he still wearing his hat in like Long John's? <laughs> like, yeah, no, no. Um, <laughs> What's the name of Curious George's The Man in the Yellow Hat? The Man in the Yellow Hat? Yeah. yeah. Um, let's say his the, name is Mr. Harris. The Man Harris. in the Yellow Hat. <laughs> Harris? The Man in the Yellow Hat looks at you. <laughs> yeah. You said his name was Harris? Yeah, Mr. Harris, say. Uh, Mr. Harris, a, a pleasure. Nice to meet you, sir. Uh, uh, you, you you go check that way. I'll check this way. We'll, we'll uh, and I'll, like, poke my head out and look towards the barn and towards the kind of the foresty side of the of the inn. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's say you are searching for a while and you don't find her. Um, Matt, give me a gray lady roll. You got it. All right. Do it, Matt. Do it. Okay. So a couple things happen because it's the gray lady. Um, first and foremost, uh, you have to spend, let me see, I think it's a resolve. And if you don't have a resolve, you have to spend a spirit, but you have resolve, so you can sort of take one off. Yep. Um, just so you know, the gray ladies are a sort of negative uh, modifier to you for any obstructions. So because there's one gray lady showing, a four would now be a five, a five would be a six. Um, what else? Okay, so that that's so you, you've been searching around, you haven't found her, and then all of a sudden, you know, Rebecca, who's been doing you know, she went one way as well, maybe she'd also been staying in the inn and sort of looking around, and she's like, I, I heard something, I heard something, it sounded like what? chanting. I sure it wasn't those pipes. I've been hearing them the whole time. They've been keeping me up. No, no. <laughs> uh, it definitely wasn't that. It sounded like, you know, sort Was of like kind this. of a throaty chanting, uh, a growl or. <laughs> no, it just or sounded. Churchy. It's just sounded like this weird chant and I heard it coming from the basement. Shall we investigate? I don't. Surely. No, come on. Don't be silly, Rebecca. I'm sure it was nothing. Let's have a look. All right. If, if that will put your mind at, mind at ease, then uh, I'm sure it'll all be fine. And I reach behind the bar and I grab the first bottle of booze that I grab. And I take a long pour from it. Um, I'm going to say, Art, that Art and Marjorie aren't back yet. Right. That makes sense. If that's, if that's cool with you guys. Just for the... You took a giant pull of Malort. Is what you did. <laughs> a thicket, thicketed malort, as seen on a. <laughs> um, I I I just grabbed that. Like I'm all talk, but I do need a little bit of liquid courage here. Come on, if it'll put your ease, and uh, this will help a little as well. Nice. Ooh, it's called Spooky Cellar. I'm. That's right. A little worried. Okay, so yeah, you make your way into the cellar. And oh, we go in and we're not just on the stairs. So before well, we go in, I open the cellar door. Do I hear anything? Um, no, you don't. 
I am going to say that I see, unless this is not okay, I do see one dim light, but I can't see what it's coming from. You know, like you open the door and it's down. And let's say it's like, um, like old, maybe like an old root cellar. Mm-hmm. Um, so like stone, stone foundation here, older. Um, but there's like one light source down there, but I can't quite make out what it is. If that's cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, see, there's nothing. Although someone left the light on. Yeah, and then you sort of. You don't hear chanting, but you do hear like, and you sort of notice that like, maybe there's like, you know, there's holes where pipes go out or something, you know, but you're hearing, you feel like you're hearing something that's not necessarily the wind from outside, but it's, it's something else. Like, you know, like if you're in like hotel rooms and there's like, you know, grates between the rooms, you can hear the other room Mm -hmm. or like in an office. It's more like that kind of sound then like oh that's just the wind upstairs you know you feel like there's a hole somewhere something that, and you're hearing something but you're not sure what and um yeah so it's and, it's just it's just an old foundation rebecca there was nothing to be worried about and she again like eyes more bloodshot than ever she sort of gets a little edgy and she, very paranoid. She's like, you don't have to tell tell me. Like, I, I know what I heard. And she seems to be very, you know, very tense for somebody that um, she doesn't seem to be getting much sleep. Something's definitely up with her. And uh, yeah, so you, you finish, you know, sort of searching around the house. Um, no sign of Emma. And like, and and let's just say Mr. Harris, he calls the police and, um, you know, it, it comes to light that they were having an affair and the police are like, well, you know, if she turns up, she turns up. If she, you know, we'll keep an eye out for her. But, you know, she is a married woman, you know, maybe had a uh, moment of conscious, you know, you know, but maybe she just went, went back to her husband. You know, I don't know, but we'll, we'll definitely... We'll keep an eye out for her, like we're going to do the bare minimum. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, other business affairs and blah, blah, blah. So then if you want, let's roll the next card. I guess, Patrick, if you want to roll oh, is a regular right? eerie England draw card. Second Interesting. Harmed. Okay, secondary harmed. Um... Is this so the gray lady takes place on the back half of that day? Is it like yeah. the next day again? Yep. So this would be day four. Okay. Um, I think we get a like a tele like not a telegram, but like a cor- like a newspaper boy or something comes running to the. It's early again. It's like seven. The sun is mm-hmm. just coming up. Okay. And I think uh, like a like a paper boy comes running to the door and, uh, you know, bang, 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 bang. And he hands us uh, you know, he's a, a message for the, the, the house just in general okay. uh, from from uh, Mr. Taylor. And he hands it to me and it's and it's a note from Mr. Taylor saying that uh, uh, Marjorie's taken another turn at the hospital. OK. I think that's what the what the secondary harm is. I think something, you know, she like it's he's been kept away even longer or they have to transfer her to a instead of the local town hospital, you know, country doctor. Like they're having to take her to like London or something at this point. Like, OK, and like extricating them from the from the scene for an extended period of time. Like. Unless that screws with the whole story, like, no. Not at all. You know, the can- and I think the secondary harm is like pretty open ended. Like okay. some of the other stuff will be kind of set, but like art killed a character. So, <laughs> right, right. It's pretty. Yes, it is wide open. Um, I will say, like, for the people who don't know the book, they do give you a list of environmental obstacles. They do give you a list of secondary character obstacles. You can technically av- you can sort mm-hmm. of free jazz them. But what I what I figured is since I was running and trying to keep those a secret. You know, mm-hmm. I, I would stick to the list and sort of throw those obstacles at you. 
Um, but if you were playing this solo or cooperatively, you, you're free to, you know, do so, whatever you want. So then maybe instead of a she's being transferred and Matt, feel free to interject on this. Maybe she's dead. Like, maybe maybe it's him saying, hey, I'm not I'm not coming back. Like, I have to like my wife just died. And like, you know, you guys are on your own. Like, you know, I've we've got to I've got Let's to leave do it that. open. Let's say it's like we don't expect her to survive the night. OK. Okay. And so we don't know. And he rushes out early. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm catching the seven o'clock to. To London. Yeah, like that, like that scribbled in the note that the that he handed to the paper boy or whatever kind of thing. Like he doesn't even come back for his bag. I don't think like he's gone, like just on the train. Oh, gone. he sorry. I missed that. He sent the note to us to yeah. let us know. Not someone was summoning him. No, he's he's gone. Like he's on the ambulance or on the train going to London. Oh, kind of thing. Actually, would you guys mind this? Would you mind if he came back early in the morning to uh-huh. like pack a bag because okay. he's going to be gone for longer than he realized. And he, um, he's obviously very worried about his wife, Marjorie, because as you guys said, she's taking a turn and you're not sure if she's going to make it and she needs additional care in London. Um, but again, you know, you notice him looking at his watch and trying to do the math. Mm-hmm. And this time he seems actually really concerned. And then he's just like, you know, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'll see if I can get someone to fill in for us. You know, please apologize to Miss Busby and her guest. Um, and he sort of hastily throws a bag together and uh, starts to head out. I'll before he leaves, I'll like try and grab it. Like I'll grab his wrist. I'll physically stop him from leaving. I'm like, you keep checking your watch. Like, is there like, do, do we have to take care? Do we need to take care of something for you here? Like, like, what can we do to help? Like, do you need us to do something like? Yeah. And, and when he sort of looks at his watch again, he's like, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm sure Margie will pull through and I'll be back this evening and it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Um, and he's like, but again, just, you know, I apologize to you. I apologize to Rebecca. And, you know, again, I don't see her around, but please tell Miss Busby. I'm deeply sorry. And we'll, we'll make arrangements to make this up to everyone. Now, do you tell him that Ms. Busby disappeared. I I feel like he's got enough to worry about right now. I'm not going to I'm not going to bug him with it. I'm going to be like okay, go take care of your, go take care of your wife and like send him on his way. Okay. Um shit, did the server just crash again? It did. Fucking yeah. A. Why is it? it's like a storming bad here. Which is weird because it's fucking October. It's a weird night. Spooky, even eerie. It, it changed because then I, I thought I heard a door shut behind me, so I texted my wife. She's like, "No, it wasn't me. I'm I'm not I'm not getting around." So, <sighs> man. So part of it is uh, like I think. Let me see if I can. It, it's saying like there's like an OS update, and I keep mm-hmm. telling it like, "No, don't do it now." And I, I'm wondering if it's like, "No, we should do it now." Yeah, no, now seems good. Um, and I'm fucking tired of this uh, no, it's been to... it's been two hours since a like i'm ready to be os updated like well we are getting close and it's a good net like things have got like we've been left in the end to our own devices yeah and he may not be coming back so if we want to pause here and uh, yeah i mean we sort of got a session and you want to pick this up again at another point and see absolutely. where it goes yeah i want to know what i want to know what it is and i'm also curious to talk at the end of like what the touchstones were for this mm-hmm. um because i don't know yet yeah <laughs> all right all right well why don't we do that why don't we why don't we pause here um and uh yeah i was trying to make this a one session thing it's meant to i think when matt when you and i did it we were able to get through in one yeah i think I think so right? I don't know if we had two I don't if you did guys, one go two guys, and one go one I feel like you guys did two for both of them I mean, maybe could have been okay but I yeah mean, well 19 cards is a lot yeah 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 and but yeah whenever you know when we're all back together um we'll we'll yeah, pick this back this up heartbeat. it was nice it was cool to get back to this I'd forgotten um yeah and it's, it's cool. and it's not hard right yeah. no no um which is something I've always appreciated about it for sure Awesome. Art, thanks for picking it up and running it for us. And mm-hmm. um, Oh, yeah, yeah no problem. Blast. And I, I, again, to the 
viewers, listeners, everything. I apologize for the, the hiccups. I'm not sure what's going on tonight, but uh, you know what? That's okay. Um, we'll figure it out. Well, I, I know what it is. Weird, it's a stupid... It's a weird night. Yeah, yeah. It's spooky. It's, this is actually is. really hot. <laughs> I just yeah, put it blown. down. <laughs> I got like a little singed hairs. I'm not. I'm not just saying that because you did, but like, I got. I got a little too close to mine. We need. Some, <laughs> you, we need to practice some fire safety. Do you, do you guys not know how to use candles? Like, is that what's happening here? I like, wanted it right next to me. You know, I wanted to be fully in it. Yeah. It's not a fire pit, Matt. It's a fucking candle. Like, oh yeah. yeah. You know, what is happening? <laughs> it's a spooky night, Patrick. You just gotta yeah, go with it. You gotta roll with it, man. And if that yeah. means burning your arm, <laughs> Patrick, um, who's standing behind you? Ooh. <laughs> Mom. Hi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We start. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, so to everyone, uh, apologies for the hiccups, but thank you for checking this out. This is Black Lodge Trivia Night. We are a tabletop RPG podcast. Um, if you prefer audio versions of all of this. Uh, just search for Black Lodge Trivia Night wherever you get your podcast, and we should show up there. Like and subscribe if you want uh, to the channel if you enjoy this kind of thing. Where you've got a lot of tabletop stuff going on. We've got some Eat the Reich. We've got Cold War Spy. Matt's got Delta Green on deck, I think. Mm. We've got some Bonfire Walk with Me. We've got potentially some Twin Peaks Rewatch. Yeah, got a lot of <laughs> a lot of scatterbrained so directions. much content. Yeah, yeah. Um, but otherwise, we appreciate everybody checking out. Um, if you want to come and chat with us, God knows why, jump into the Discord. Uh, mm -hmm. The link to that should be in the uh, description below. And again, this was English Eerie. This was a bit of a mess of a night, but English Eerie, absolutely worth checking out. It's by Scott Malthouse, and I'll make sure to have links to it in the uh, show notes. So thank you very much, for everybody, for checking this out, and uh, we'll be back soon. Take care. Awesome. Thank you. Good night. Night, everybody. The music during the RPG session in Foundry was provided by the Foundry module Tabletop RPG Music and composed by Ian Fisher. You can find his Patreon at www.patreon.com slash tabletoprpgmusic, all one word.